Hello again, National 5 Biology pupils. Uh, this is Mr. Kinnear with another video lesson uh, for National 5 Biology. Uh, we're now moving on to Unit 3, Life on Earth. Uh, and the first part we're going to look at is biodiversity, which is key area 3.1. So biodiversity is a word you'll come across before. You'll have heard it in the news. You'll have heard uh, David Attenborough talk about it in his films and a variety of different places. But biodiversity is also a word you've talked about in third year. Uh, so that split of the word bio and diversity, bio obviously relating to biology and life, diversity uh, meaning variety. So obviously biodiversity is the variety of life. And you can talk about the biodiversity within your local area, within Aberdeenshire, within Scotland, or obviously we can also talk about it in the world as a whole. And that's changing um, over time through a variety of different human interactions. Um, and obviously things that you'll have heard about quite a lot, uh, like climate change. So again, at biodiversity, man is changing the biodiversity on this planet as we speak. As with all National 5 Biology, Unit 3 Life on Earth contains a huge amount of keywords, so your vocabulary needs to improve. Now, here's an example of the word that you need to get your head around. Now, I'm not going to go through all of those words and definitions in this video lesson because that would be really dull. So I'm going to leave it to you to make sure you explore those words, whether it's through Scholar, BBC Bite Size, or even just Googling them to get your definitions. Um, but you need to understand them. The more confident you are uh, with that vocabulary, the more confident you'll be coming to answering questions on it and be able to piece those things together and see how they relate to each other. So the one thing I do is thinking about flashcards. So you can write this stuff down in your jota, but if you start straight away with flashcards, so the word on one side, the definition on the other, and you could test yourself on a regular basis, whether it's you on your own or with someone at home uh, alongside you. I will, however, give you some of the definitions. So we'll start off with ecosystems, which is again a word you may be familiar with. You'll uh, heard it or David Attenborough or in previous biology lessons. So ecosystems are incredibly complex. There's different types of ecosystems all around the world. And that can be defined as the habitat plus the community plus all abiotic factors. So where something lives, all the organisms that do live there and all of the conditions that they live in. And to give you some examples how those uh, things could be vastly different, we'll look at some key ecosystems. Rainforest, so huge amounts of rainfall, uh, high temperatures um, and humidity, but huge levels of biodiversity. So we're still finding brand new species within a variety of rainforests. But again, those rainforests are suffering from deforestation. Coral reefs, again, being hit by, by climate change and bleaching. Uh, the increased uh, temperature of the seawater, but you've got huge amounts of life within coral reefs, thousands of different species, almost as many species as rainforest. And again, savanna, you'll have seen um, examples of that, lions, zebras, uh, giraffes, all those kind of things. So uh, tropical grasslands, uh, warm temperatures year round, but uh, peak seasons for rainfall in the summer and Arctic. And again, you might not necessarily think of the Arctic as a huge uh, biodiversity place, but it is. Uh, there's incredible uh, extremes in terms of cold, seasonal changes in daylight, but there is a huge abundance of biodiversity. But again, all of those are being hit by human impacts in a variety of different ways. Another key word is niche, which is a bit more complicated. So here we've got an example of an oak tree. A niche is the role that an organism plays uh, and describes all of its interactions with both living and non-living factors. Um, so, for instance, um, it talks about the resources that it might require, but also that um, where it lives and what um, resources it might provide for other organisms. So, for instance, this oak tree has a huge impact. You know, oak trees can live for a huge amounts of time. So, um, even when they're growing, uh, they can provide uh, huge amounts of nutrient resources for organisms, but actually, even when they fall down and die, they're still providing huge amounts of resources and habitats and food and nourishment for a variety of other organisms, uh, insects, uh, fungi that will eventually decompose this. So they talk about an oak tree um, growing for 300 years, living for 300 years and dying for 300 years. And all of those times, it can provide uh, 
um, a huge amount of resources, nutrients, shelter, etc., for other organisms. So that's niche. It's the role that an organism plays within a community and talking about all its interactions with different organisms. Food chains are something you've come across in previous biology lessons. So this is quite simply put the energy being transferred from producers uh, to consumers. So herbivores and then to carnivores. So uh, plants, green plants and, and some algae have that ability to photosynthesize. So that is converting light energy into chemical energy. And then obviously then something comes along and eats that and gets the energy there and that can pass along. So we need to be clear that an arrow is the flow of energy. You could say that it shows that the mouse eats the insect and the owl eats the mouse, but we need to be specific in biology and talk about the flow of energy. And you can see that we have a primary consumer. So that's the first thing that eats um, the plant or the producer. And a mouse is a secondary consumer. So it eats a primary consumer and tertiary consumer that owl eats the secondary consumer. You could have quaternary um, consumers, but when you have those long food chains, then actually the loss of energy uh, makes it not worthwhile. And we'll talk about that as we go into the next key area. But life and the interactions between organisms are a bit more complicated than simple food chains. So that's when we put those together into food webs to show the complex relationship between uh, different organisms. So as you can see, we've got a plant that's eaten by butterflies, caterpillars, uh, birds and a squirrel. And those things are then uh, potentially consumed by other organisms. And that's when the interactions can be a bit more complicated. So, for instance, this squirrel, uh, which eats uh, the plant, but is then consumed by the fox. If for some reason uh, we have um, a disease that gets into the squirrel population and kills them off, that um, fox then loses one of its sources of food. And the key thing that can happen there is that the population of foxes could reduce uh, because it's got less food. But also as well, that can have, an, can have an impact on the birds because the foxes that are there uh, still need their food, so they might need to eat more birds. So that then has an impact on those. And then ultimately, um, the snake which eats birds, that might have less food. So again, that might reduce. So there's, you could see that there starts to be a complicated relationship. And even if you think about it, you might get more plants about because the squirrel is eating less of them. But then that means more food for the caterpillars. That could happen. And the butterflies. So we need to think about if we lose one of these species, the impact that it could possibly have on other organisms within this food web. And it could end up being an increase in that population, a decrease in that population, or it could stay the same because there could be things that um, impact it both ways. So that's a question you may be asked in your national five tests. So one of the relationships we see in food chains and food webs is predator versus prey. So we've got a graph here to show that relationship. And as you can see, we've got the population number of foxes, the predators in that green dashed line and the population number of the rabbits, the prey in the blue line. And you can see then how they might cycle through. And one of the national five kind of questions you might get asked is describe this graph. And that command word means tell me what's happening in the graph. And hopefully you should see uh, from the blue and green lines how they interact. That as the prey population increases, the number of predators increase and vice versa, as the prey population decreases, the number of predators decrease. So that's described, tell you what's happening in the graph. And secondly, you might be asked to explain the graph. And that's when you've been asked a slightly different question. Tell me why are the changes in the graph happening? And again, you should be able to understand that the increase in prey population provides more food for the predators, allowing them to increase in their numbers. And equally, 
when the predator numbers increase, that means more of the prey are being eaten, and therefore the prey numbers decrease. And again, as you keep going, if the prey numbers decrease, then obviously there's less food for predators, so there's less predators able to survive. So that is a constant cycle of those numbers happening. So now you should understand predator and prey, but also the difference between describe the graph, so tell me what is happening, and explain the graph, tell me why that is happening. Competition is a word you'll all be familiar with, whether it's you know, football, running, um, art competition, baking, or anything like that, where you are trying to be number one. You are trying to be off the competition. You are trying to be better than everyone else. And um, organisms have the same thing. So competition occurs when resources organisms acquire are in short supply. And the shorter supply, then the more competition there is. And there's an example of a race. Only one of those people can be number one, be the winner, get the gold. Animals, however, also compete for resources such as food, for territory and mates. And there's a picture of an example you may be familiar with from our local area. Uh, we have a huge amount of deer population in Aberdeenshire, which obviously then have this rutting to compete with each other uh, for mates. But plants also compete for resources such as light, space and soil nutrients. That's a bit of a tree canopy from below. Now, obviously, if you're below that uh, tree canopy, then you are going to get less light than the leaves at the top facing the sun. So again, that's one of the things plants do to try and make the most of their resources compete against each other. And the faster you can grow taller, then maybe the faster or the more light that you get. There's two different types of competition, one more intense than the other. Uh, so when two species occupy the same niche, then it results in interspecific competition and the least well adapted species is eliminated. Now one of the common examples we use in National 5 and the SQA use quite a bit is red and grey squirrels because that is a story that we might be familiar with in Scotland. So red squirrel is a native to the UK and particularly Scotland um, and the grey squirrel is something that's been brought in from North America. Now the grey squirrel is a better competitor, more adept at getting the food resources and therefore the red squirrel is being displaced. Now, another problem that red squirrel faces is that Scotland used to be forest from coast to coast, north to south. Uh, but obviously that has changed through farming, through cities and all those kind of developments. Uh, that means that if it is displaced, then it can't as easily get to another forest. So the size of forest has been diminished. So therefore that poses itself another problem. And that's one of the reasons why the red squirrel is being displaced and is in danger because of this better competitor that is um, occupying the same niche. Most of the time, however, um, then through evolution, um, species that share the same ecosystem occupy different niches through specializations for adaptations and food. So for instance, one of the key things that Darwin looked at uh, in terms of his idea of evolution was finches in the Galapagos Islands. So he saw that a huge different variety of species of finches had developed, uh, but could survive quite happily. And the main reason is that they'd actually ended up with different adaptations to their beaks, which meant that they ate different food sources. So therefore they were not competing as strongly against each other as they would. They might still compete for nesting sites, etc. But for food supply, they weren't competing. So that is then why they managed to adapt and evolve to become different species because they're specialized and they quite happily live together. And I think about this sometimes as, you know, um, Mo Farah and Usain Bolt are both runners, excellent at what they do, but they don't compete against each other. They can both still win the gold medal because they're not competing in the same races against each other. So again, they are side by side, both gold medal winners. They're not competing against each other because they have different adaptations to do different races. Intraspecific competition, however, is different. It's more intense. That is happening between 
uh, organisms of the same species, just like this example of hungry, hungry hippos. The hippos are competing for the biggest amount of marbles, and therefore the competition is quite intense because they have the same resource need, and therefore they're competing for all of those. It's therefore more intense. This then regulates the size of the population and obviously then helps support this idea of survival of the fittest because weaker members, less able members of a population are then weeded out by natural selection. So the slower organisms, um, if you're talking about giraffes, the smaller um, neck of uh, giraffes would therefore not be able to get as much food and therefore they would die out and therefore that would add to the strength and size of that population. So that's the lesson for today. Uh, so we have learned that biodiversity is the variety of life. And there's a huge amount of vocabulary that goes along with that, that we need to learn. And as I said, flashcards would be a really good way to get your head around that. The more comfortable you are with the vocabulary, then the more comfortable you'll be with answering questions. Uh, and we talk about that vocabulary when we talk about interactions of different organisms with each other. So food webs and food chains, predator prey relationships, all those kind of things. Um, and also the last point, competition. So there's two different types of competition, uh, inter-specific when we're talking about two different species, intra when it's two organisms of the same species. And that intra-specific between two of the same species is more intense than the inter-specific. So that's us. Hope that's been helpful for you. Any problems, questions or queries, obviously get in touch and I'll speak to you again soon. Bye.